Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is John and this is Excellence in Agriculture. This is a follow-up video and also probably a bit of a conclusion on my bale grazing experiment. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link right up here for all of you to go check out. I would call it a, a bit of a success. Um, the bales that I ended up putting here were they were from this field right here and they were the worst hay I'd put up all year. It was very stemmy and as you can see uh, it, some of it almost turned into straw. Even so if you look where they've had the most time on it they cleaned it up decent but you look you know right here and it's the, the, there's what people would say there's a lot of waste so one thing I started doing since the hay was so poor every few days I would come out here and put a nice good bale that I had prepared with twine I, I was gonna do bale grazing on a larger scale but that ended up not happening sorry about the wind guys but weather's changing but as you can see here behind me you can see the cows too the hay that was a lot better quality there's not very much waste at all um, there's a little bit but it's just the same general principle applies when you're feeding hay if the better the hay the better they're gonna clean it up now if you're running it all through a you know a processor you can mix the old the poor hay and the good hay and they'll they'll eat it all up but that's expensive right the idea behind bale grazing is to save you enough money to make more money on your cattle because you're not having to start a tractor and go out go out and feed you're not having to move your hay if you're able to bale graze where your hay is put up you know you bale it you dump the bale and then that's it you don't have to move it again when you add all those different things up you know transporting the hay storing the hay feeding the hay and the fuel and everything that goes into that it all adds up a neighbor of mine who does this um, I believe he says he saves right around 24 2500 dollars a month by bale grazing so you take that time six months that's a that's a bit of change left back in your pocket from simply feeding this way I mean you the amount of hay wasted even if you're wasting this much hay it's still gonna you're still gonna come out ahead the only reason whoops the only reason there's this much waste here is because this was such crummy poor hay but if uh, well let's walk over here hopefully the wind won't be too bad well we got chased away by the rain I didn't want to get wet and I didn't want my camera getting wet so we retreat to the hoop building um, and it's slowing up now it's kind of coming and going in bursts and I'll just wait here a minute or two and finish my thoughts while they're still fresh in my memory bale grazing I'm going to pause the video right there and you can watch the rest of my uh, thoughts on bale grazing at the end of this video. Uh, when it quit raining I went back out and took a look at how much hay they actually waste and uh, how I set up for bale grazing and everything. So let's go look at that right now. So just to give you guys an idea of what it looked like with a higher quality bale. As you can see there's there's some waste but as you can see it's already decomposing and becoming yummy yummy organic matter and turning into dirt and as you can see here already we got green grass coming it's already been <laughs> chewed off by a cow but this has been here for a while now but it's already coming through. There's not that much waste. I've seen more waste when you roll a bale out. 
on some hay. And this one isn't even the best here. There was one down here, they practically licked it clean. But over here with the poor hay, of course, they didn't clean it up as well. There's a lot left over, but it's mostly these thick stem stuff. It's practically straw. They ate everything else, they ate all the leaves. And what do you know? Green grass coming through there too. It'll come through this stuff. And it'll do real good. It'll help hold the moisture down. I bet you the grass that grows there, compared to the grass that grows here, this is going to be way better. How much you want to bet? Put it in the comments below. Let me know. Is it going to be worse here? Or better there? Tell me. What do you think? And so you don't miss. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Just to show you guys what I did, um, because I didn't have a poly braid and a reel and whatnot, I was just using what I had. I just had a roll of electric wire. That's what I strung all this with. I'm gonna pull this all up now because the cows are complaining that. Anyway, since I didn't have a poly braid and on a reel and whatnot, I just had this electric wire hanging around. It's very simple. I just uh, ran this wire through here to keep this from turning. And so when it was time, I'll just show you how I moved this between the bales, even though I don't need to do it now because I'm all done, but I'm just, now is a nice day to film when it's not raining. And if I don't do it now, you guys won't get to see this. See how much I care about you guys, my subscribers? I'll do anything for you guys. All right, so there you got the reel like that. And all, that's all I did was just hooked it on there like that and ran it through the holes. These reels usually have several holes on them. And just it's an extra piece of wire. This is a, your standard step in post, but I found it just wasn't quite strong enough. So I just quick went and got this guy and would stick it in the ground to help brace this. This is just one of these junky electric fence posts that I bent on the end. And that worked. What I've seen that's better is you can just put another one of these posts in over here and then take a uh, just a piece of twine, sisal twine, tie it here, tie it there. That works a lot better. People do that for when they're cell grazing in pastures and it it works. So anyway, you can do that too. And then I would just pull this up, slide it down the line to the next row. So I'll just show you how I move the wire over the bales and whatnot. It's pretty self-explanatory, but hope it helps you. There, see how easy that was? It'd be a lot easier with a poly braid rope. You just wind it up and then pull the post out of the bale, wind it up, move it over, go to the next spot. This was such a short run, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And it was just an experiment. Next year, I'm gonna go north and south. Probably be, mm, I don't know, a dozen bales in a row. That would work better for a larger group of cows. But if you've only got you know, a handful ahead, you know, if you got five cows and you're looking for better ways to graze, I would only do it two, three bales at a time just because so they don't waste as much. And now back to our original commentary. Bale grazing. There's definitely 
uh, money to be saved, money to be earned via bail grazing. It just takes a little bit of planning and a little bit of setup to do it. Ideally, if you have hayland in which you can have access to water, I highly recommend it. It is the way to go. Um, after experimenting it just a little bit with these cows that had calved, um, I, I'm sold on it. I was sold on it before. I've actually been sold on it for a couple of years. But I just haven't had time to do it. And you know, it, it's hard to break old habits. I know I have a lot of old bad habits. <laughs> and you just, you slowly got to break those. I mean, whether it's the way you feed the cows over the winter time or if it's the way you graze cows uh, over the summer. There's, there's many different ways to do it and some work better than others and some work better in different, you know, parts of the country or in parts of the world than others. I'm not saying there isn't a one size fits all on any of this, but as far as bale grazing goes, if you're feeding a good quality bale and they have full access to it via the bale grazing, they clean it up quite well. I was impressed. I mean, I have seen some bale grazing at, at different places and sometimes it looks like a mess. Like that first part that I showed you is just a lot of waste and left over because they're picky and they pick through it because they have access to a lot of other hay. And it isn't really waste because that uh, organic matter will break down and will help increase the soil structure wherever you're feeding. If that's in your hayland, that's great. You will increase your productivity on the hayland. I can't remember all the numbers. You can probably about double your hay production on a particular hay field by implementing bale grazing over a series of years if you do it right. And that's great because then you don't need as many acres to put up the amount of hay that you need for your cattle. You can, you know, you don't have to rent as much hay land or you don't have to, or you'd have some extra hay to sell or you're going to have more as a reserve. Whereas if you're just going out there and feeding every day the way you have been forever, you're not building up your hay land, you're not saving that money in feeding, you're just, you're just, throwing money out the window into the snowbank. I think this is something everybody should at least try. I'm not saying it's the best for everybody, but I think it's worth a shot and it's, it's not that hard. Uh, I would recommend from things that I've done and I just was using what I had around here. I didn't go out and really buy anything so I could conduct this experiment, but I would get a, uh, poly braid electric wire on a, on a roll up reel. I would get the proper posts that stick in the side of the bales. You can use in the ground posts, but if your ground's froze, that's going to be a pain. Some guys will carry around a, a drill, cordless drill with a long bit, and they'll drill down in the ground and then they can stick their electric post in. You can do that. That's perfectly fine. Go, go, go knock yourself out. But, um, uh, if you can just stick it in the side of the bale, that's just so easy. I did that once for a neighbor and it worked. It worked slick. In conclusion, there's a lot of benefits to bale grazing and you just need to do a little planning and you can do this. If you've got cows, it doesn't matter how many you've got, however many few you've got, you can come up with a program to make this work. The biggest hang up is water. If you're doing it on a hayland, and especially if that hayland is far away from home, you got those other issues to consider, you know, such as shelter and, and like I said, water access. The, those I see as being the biggest hang-ups when it comes to bale grazing. Even so, if you've got, surely you got, if you're not feeding, unless you're feeding in a feedlot, if you're bringing your cows home for the wintertime and they're just in a feedlot, uh, bale grazing ain't for you. Bale grazing is not for a feedlot. Bale grazing is if you're in a, feeding in a pasture or even in a 
I mean, I wouldn't recommend it in a field because a field that you're crop that you're cropping because um, I don't recommend feeding hay in any field that you're cropping because you're you're fight you're working against yourself. You're se there's grass seed in your bales and everything else, and you're basically seeding your land down to grass. I mean, sure, you're getting manure and organic matter out there, but you're going to be fighting those weeds for years. I've seen fields where they even ran it all through a processor, you know, a, a hay processor, and you can see where every one of those trails are throughout the field for five, six years later. You can see where that is. I do not feed on cropland if you can help it, unless you're planning on putting it down to grass. <laughs> Don't, don't feed your hay on cropland. Um, Every time you feed on your hayland or on your pasture, no matter which way you're doing it, but especially through ba bale grazing, you're patting yourself on the back and you are, um, you're putting money in your pocket. So go out and try it. So what's next? Well, I will do some videos here in the future as to see how the grass comes up through what waste of hay there is, see how well it comes up, see if it does any better, see if it, it's healthier and grows thicker or if it's terrible and doesn't come up. We'll, we'll find out. We'll take you along for that journey. Uh, we'll, next fall, we'll see how it looks. A year from now, we'll see how this looks from where we bale grazed. And the only way you're going to catch that is if you subscribe to this channel and if you enjoyed this video remember to hit that thumbs up and we have a lot of great content coming out click on the channel and go look at the other videos we've been putting out i've been trying to churn them out here pretty quickly we've got a wide variety of content whether it's excellence in ranching excellence in farming excellence in modern homesteading family you name it it's all here because this is excellence in agriculture. I'm John. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.